Hey guys, it's Kevin. Uh, today we're going to fix our uh, Epson uh, EcoTank ET2760. You're going to get this sooner or later that uh, the ink pad service life is up. Uh, also, a part of uh, your printer is at the end of service life. Basically, the ink pad is a uh, printer diaper. And Epson expect you to, once a while, uh, to get a new ink pad and install it by their technicians. Today I'm going to show you how to save some money and do it yourself, and uh, you can get a fix within an hour. You'll need a computer and a screwdriver. Uh, there are two parts here. The first part is uh, we have to inspect the physical ink pad to see if it needs to be replaced. And uh, the second part is we have to trick the printer think you have a new, new pad. So, okay, uh, let's take a look of the the ink pad first. It looks like a 70% full. So let me check the printer first. Uh, normally, a uh, ink pad is reset with uh, either a software or a hardware uh, resetter. If you don't see a chip here, it's normally done with a software. If you're not sure, uh, you can check at the ink chip that night. Is a uh, night not dot com. So go to WIC. Uh, by the way, WIC means uh, waste ink counter. And there are supported models. Uh, you can see the ET series and uh, ET twenty seven sixty is included. So that's why uh, that, that's how you know it is uh, reset by software. Uh, don't pay the money yet. Just make sure that it's going to work for computer first. So we go to English. And uh, that's going to download uh, a file. And in the download folder, and uh, double click that file. And do you want to install? Yes. After it's downloaded, you're going to see it they put uh, some icons on your desktop. And we'll click English. What is going on? Uh, the problem is my Norton uh, catch it as a security threat. So I'm going to open up a Norton. If you use other uh, antivirus software like a McAfee or something, uh, the procedure will be similar. We go to Device Security, Expand and go to Histories. And you can see it uh, quarantined my ink chip, that, ink, ink chip WIC. Here it said uh, Restore. And uh, then it's going to exclude this file ID and say yes. Now you can close off those windows. Let's try again. Now we're talking. Now click uh, with ink counters, and uh, you're supposed to plug in your uh, printer into USB port with a USB cable. You cannot do this wirelessly. If you plug it in, click here, and you're going to see the printer model that you're going you're going to you're going to do. And uh, once you see this model and uh, do a read. And it will tell you what's the percentage of the counter uh, is used. So actually, even if it look bad, it's not that full. So um, yeah, I I'm gonna go ahead and reset it for you. So um, so you'll see how how it's done. But uh, once this reach like 80, 90 percent, you want to have a new ink pad. Otherwise, just keep using it. That's fine. Once you can read the ink counter, that means uh, the this software gonna work for you. So now. It's time to pull off your credit card and go back to inkchip.net, click buy. And you want a WIC program with adjustment program. Going to be one and uh, add to cart. And uh, click cart and uh, proceed to check out. Uh, the code usually comes into your email within seconds. I never had it delay more than one second. <laughs> it seems whenever I click it, you get a code right away. I heard somebody told me that, that they wait like a couple hours, didn't get the code. Uh, in that case, just email email their support, and they should be they, they should help you out. Anyway, you're gonna get a long string. You're gonna get a two emails. One is the key, another one is the receipt. In the Normally, it's in actually in the first email, you're going to get the key, and uh, it's really long string. So just hit reset and I just paste that long string in and say OK. And then set done. Please restart printer in order to finish the counter reset process. Now I'm going to physically hit the 
power button and uh, turn the printer off and uh, turn it back on. Okay, uh, now just uh, click the read the waste counters and you can see it back to zero. So that counter is reset. And also another thing I want to mention is I remember we click the waste encounter and also what you can do is you can do the deep cleaning with this software. So it's a really free, nice software to have. Okay, you've done the hard part and then now it's the easy part. Uh, instead of let the ink flow into that uh, waste, uh, waste pad, um, uh, maybe what you want to do is uh, install external tank, uh, just tank, just a bottle. So the ink will flow into the bottle instead of diaper. Put the printer on the side where you can see where the ink come out. Uh, there are many ways you can do it. Uh, let me show you what you need. We we'll go to bchtechnology.com and go to accessories. And uh, it's not this uh, resetter in uh, waste tank in resetter. It's this waste tank. What you need is we're going to have a dual connector like this. This will go into the printer, and. Uh, it's called a dual connector because it can connect to two diameters. Now your second choice is you can choose uh, uh, which, uh, what is diameter of the tube. And this uh, 4 is larger and the 2.5 is smaller. It's, it's just up to you. It, both of them works. And uh, then you need a little bottle like this to hold the tank, uh, hold the ink. And also you need uh, some kind of Velcro. Uh, to st stabilize the the the, uh, the bottle on the printer or on your table, so it don't tip over, and that's all you need. So we first uh, fit uh, the ink connector to that uh, ink outlet, and uh, make sure that fits. Then uh, it will be easier if you attach a tube first, and then insert into the ink outlet. Now we can put the printer on the upright position. Now you can cut a tube to length and then stabilize the bottle on the desktop or uh, on the printer. It's up to you if you want to put this cover back or drill a hole on the cover or just like uh, make a jar like this. Okay, uh, now we're going to do some maintenance. And uh, on your home screen, go to maintenance menu and uh, click OK. And uh, select a second option, which is uh, head cleaning, just say OK and uh, hit start. And now take a look of the back of the printer and you're going to see the printer going to dump the ink into your bottle rather than into the ink pad. A couple things I want to add is your first clean might not having the ink coming out. So uh, it might need to go to the second cleaning, which is finish it as it's going to ask you print the nozzle check. And uh, just like uh, the nozzle check is imperfect, let the printer do the second level cleaning. And that's when the ink comes out. Okay, and the second thing I want to add is do not do too many in a row. So even if you have an imperfect nozzle check, every third one, just 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 trick the printer, say it is perfect. Then you go to the main menu, then you have to, you, you, you can do the cleaning again. If you just keep cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and always says imperfect, eventually the printer will think your uh, uh, printhead is uh, damaged. It will say your ink, uh, your printhead is damaged, and uh, it will stop cleaning. Okay, so don't clean too many times in a row. You have to select a perfect clean. Um, you, you have to trick the printer thing. Say the result is perfect. And uh, other than that, I think that's all the thing you need to know. And I just want to show you the lemon tree I put in the front office. Uh, finally, I put uh, this lemon tree here. Uh, it got some spiders. If anybody know how to kill the spiders, uh, let me know. Uh, just uh, uh, I tried the different things. I tried the water and I tried the uh, chemical. I just cannot kill them. But those lemon trees seems happy. Had a first flower, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com. Cheers.